when did the desire to serve the Lord really kind of push me or finally move me into a committed ministry like this one? Well, I wouldn't say that it's one moment, but I'm going to give you my process so that maybe if you're looking for opportunities to serve, that you can see how the Lord worked in my and my husband's life. When we were first married, a man said, you know, enjoy the first six months of marriage. But then after that, get involved in church ministry. And I have watched that piece of advice become so true for married couple after married couple. The ones who don't get involved in church really become self-focused. And and it's not long before they start thinking, you know, name the excuse and they drop out of church. They just are self-focused rather than why am I at church? I'm at church to be perfected in Christ, to worship the Lord, to study scripture, how doctrinally sound is my church, and what am I giving in this scenario? So always find a way to be active in church. Be a, a giver, not a taker. The second thing was that we stepped through each open door as they presented themselves. And I would say that when we first got married, we probably weren't even sure what does this mean. You know, some churches are, you know, you get saved, baptized, and they immediately stick you in a ministry because when and what I'm working, there's so many things to do. They think that if you don't get involved, you're going to leave the church, and then it becomes this really weird numbers uh, issue. And in some cases, that's not it. You really are serving just to be a giver, and you're not being overloaded. But we didn't really know, you know, well, where are we going to serve? Where are we going to fit in? And he was, his oldest, his older brother was 12 years older than him. So he kind of was raised as an only child, my, my husband was. And I was a youngest child, so we didn't really have any experience with children. And we mostly had had experience with teenagers or junior high. And so we were thinking, oh, you know, that's probably the direction that we would go. And one of the people in our church, the Sunday school administrator asked, you know, could you help work out in the two and three year olds? And our first instinct, you know, having this idea that God calls you and you're going to have like a life's work. We're like, we don't really feel led to work with two year olds. And really it's just because we had no experience with children at all, nor did we have any experience of how to work in a church. Outside of, you know, we were in a youth group or, you know, I'd worked in the music ministry. I'd kind of helped out with youth ministry as in a college and career setting. We weren't sure what this meant, but that was a mistake to say, no, I, I don't really feel like, you know, we're both like, well, I don't really feel like this is a direction that God is leading our hearts at all. But this is the thing. It was a need. And we didn't realize that God just opens doors for needs and he will use people who are available and willing. And I, I regret that. I wish we'd been like, you know, we're not good at this. We're totally unprepared. We have no understanding of, you know, what God calls people to do. But if you need some help, we'll help for sure. And we'll figure it out as we go along. And that truly the whole, here's an open door. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'll figure it out and do the hard work has been the pattern for the past 20 or 18 years of our lives for sure. And, you know, simple things like there was a need with junior choir and I played the piano for them for 10 years. It was not anything major. It's not sparkling or glamorous or a life calling, but it was a need. My husband was asked to teach junior church or rescue mission and, you know, his heart for years was to teach in Bible Institute. He's always had the heart of a teacher, but that just was not happening. So he just walked through the doors that were there and eventually he just, you know, stopped caring about teaching in Bible Institute. And when he didn't care anymore, and I'm not saying this is how God always works, but it was interesting when he was just like, whatever, I'm just going to keep doing this and this and this. He was asked to teach in Bible Institute. He's an excellent teacher. He's, you know, he's an author, roadmap through Revelation and all, anyway. He's a good teacher, and, and but that wasn't for years. And had we not been willing and available to help where it was needed, who knows if those other opportunities would have opened up. 
another open door where two different times somebody offered to pay to make a CD because we were po so poor <laughs> for a long, long time. There's no way we could have expended any of this money. And somebody, I remember one person said, you know, just do it. And if you can pay me back. Another person years later for my third CD came up and said, I've been saving up all these tips for I don't know what, but I really felt like God wanted you to make a CD. And so here's all this money. And so I started by faith because the door was open and then somebody else gave me an envelope in church for a large amount of money and they didn't even know that this is what I was working on. So I just stepped through the doors as they were opening. And then for this ministry, I'd kind of really wanted to make another album, but life is encumbering and I had learned how to make a website for the books that we had written and that took a lot of energy and I didn't know how to do any of that. And I just had to learn, you know, it's the same thing with the two-year-old. I don't know how to do this, but it was a necessity. And so I was like, okay, I'll do the hard work and figure it out. And the same thing for this ministry. Somebody came and said, I really believe that, uh, that God is leading me to give you this software and this MIDI and, and then some startup money to sell sheet music and to move this ministry forward. And I was just like, this was not on my radar. <laughs> I'm homeschooling all these kids. And then I felt convicted, like God had just given me this thing. And who was I to bury it? Because it felt uncomfortable. So I just dug in and I said, okay, Lord, I, I don't want to be a, a foolish steward who says, you know, thou art a hard taskmaster and I was afraid. And so I dug a hole and I buried it. <laughs> I just said, what does it take to, to put this type of product out there? And then because I walked through that door and then money for cameras and money for a computer and little by little, as I've done this, it just has become what it is. And, uh, that just really is the theme. The more that I surrender to the tiny little things and I cannot tell you this is scary. Creativity is scary. Walking through a door where you're not going to get any recognition. All you're going to get is frustration and hard work. And I don't know how to do this and research and more. I don't know how to do this. And then failures because you didn't know how to do it. And so you kept messing up. Oh, so embarrassing. But was I faithful? Yeah, I was faithful. And every time I've gone through a door and had to work hard and learn something new, it has prepared me for something that was bigger. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm shooting for this big something. I'm just saying that I'm so glad God didn't just throw me into this. Because I probably would have freaked out. <laughs> I'm glad that I learned the skills little by little. It's like if somebody would have handed me five kids, my my kid's age and said, here, homeschool him. Nope. Nope. Bitty nope. Nope. <laughs> but I started out with one little thing, one little baby. And I didn't know even how to change a diaper. I've never, I didn't even babysit people. And yet here I am. And it's not super hard because I just walked through the door that was in front of me. So that's my story, and I hope that that helps you walk through the doors and the needs. Somebody needs help, and even if you don't know how, say, hey, I'm here. <laughs>